Hi, I'm Rick Lomas, the CEO and founder of Supai, and today I'm answering your anonymous questions on Ask a Coder. So on today's Ask a Coder, I've been asked, how do you do well in a coding interview, especially if they ask you to code in front of them? So firstly, I just want to say that I'm not a fan of coding tasks where you're put in front of someone. Uh, I think it puts a needed pressure on the person applying for the job. And also it's incredibly unrealistic to be put in front of that position. You know, you're not rev ever really under that amount of pressure. And actually one of the best ways that I've heard a real-time code task is done by Sanctuary Computer. And their process is they're given a task and the interviewer goes away and they check in every now and again. But that interviewee is given time and space to think. But let's say it happens. Let's say you're put in front of a whiteboard or a laptop and someone's watching you. So what I would want to hear is someone talk through this process. I don't really care if they're getting the code wrong, but I want to see this kind of way of working. A bug in your code is a lot less of a problem than getting the process wrong. You can fix bugs by Googling them or using Stack Overflow or asking the Supply community. So let's take an example problem. Let's say you have to code up a light box on the website. So the first thing I want you to see is the process to how to solve the problem in the normal human language. So in English, for me, I want to know exactly what a light box does. So when a user clicks a link, something happens. Well, what happens? Well, a box pops up with some content. What content is that? Well, it depends on what was clicked originally. How does a user get rid of the light box? Well, they click a close button and that light box goes away. So let's work this out in written English. So when a user clicks a particular link, some code is run. This code gets the relevant content to style up the tag and show to a user. We might have other things pop up as well, such as a close button, maybe a background. And when a user clicks this close button, for instance, this tiled tag disappears. So this kind of process is what a hiring manager like me would be looking for. I don't really care if you're using a certain library, unless it's really part of the job description. I want to see you get this process correct. And writing this out at the start will give you a lot less pressure towards the end of the task. Because if you run out of time, a hiring manager will still know what process you would have taken and what approach you would have taken. Now, don't be afraid to say I don't know to a question too. Now, some of these hiring processes can have some kind of like gotcha questions in there on purpose to see pressure. Now, I'd rather see you say that you don't know, but you do know where to look up the answer than just bullshit your way through a question, for instance. But lastly, you may not get the job. So companies have a lot of people applying for the same role and it can be nearly impossible to pick between people. So at Supai, for instance, we've had 3,000 people apply for one job role once and we're just a small company. That didn't mean there was just one good person. We actually had to turn down a lot of fantastic and talented people that we would have loved to have on board. And a no doesn't mean that you failed. If you do make it to a code test and get a no, ask for feedback from the hiring team. They may not give you the feedback, but there's no harm in asking, and that could really help you out for future applications. And good luck with all of these interviews too.